Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you what's really going on in this world. I'm going, I found a, a video that really lays out what's really going on, and, and when I say what's really going on, I mean what's really coming. Into 20, into between now and 2030, we're going to enter a completely new world. Um, but in this, at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you and show you what is coming your way with regard to 5G, with, with regard to quantum computing, AI, blockchain, all of this. Everything we've been talking about on this channel, I'm going to open your eyes to what's really coming. But before I do that, I want to relate to you a story. This actually happened to me as a kid. The, uh, I'll never forget it. The night, it was the night of the, the first Gulf War when it started. I believe I was in high school at the time. I was at a youth, um, uh, it was with a church. It was a, it was like youth group that we would do during the week and all the, they had a facility where, where the guy, we would be playing basketball and then after that we would meet and do a church thing. Well, they had TVs in this facility and I will never forget it. Because I walked to the TV, everybody said that the, a war had broken out and the U.S. was was bombing Iraq. Now I walked in and I remember what, look, it was CNN. This is how CNN blew up as a as a network. For those of you that don't know, no pun intended, blow up. But CNN was was live streaming. It was the first time this had ever happened. They were live streaming. You could see the bombs going off and you could see everything happen. And I will never forget it. Because it, at that time, they started talking about how er, the Iraq was shooting Scud missiles um, over towards the, where the U.S. soldiers were and towards Israel. And I'll never forget it. They, they On that broadcast, they were talking about how the United States um, was going to be able to knock down a lot of these missiles with what was called a Patriot missile. Now, at that point in my life, I had never heard of a Patriot missile. Nobody that I knew knew what a Patriot missile was. The last time that we had heard e even the concept of a missile being shot down out of the sky was from when Ronald Reagan was president and he started what was called the Star Wars program. But the, my understanding was that that had failed and they had scrapped the project. Meanwhile, some, the United States behind the scenes was building it anyway. Because then we had all of a sudden we had the Patriot missile, which could knock down missiles out of the sky. But it was a secret thing because I, nobody knew anything about this. I didn't know anything about it. If, if it was something going on, I didn't know anything about it. But all of a sudden, I knew that the United States had technology to shoot missiles out of the sky. Well, the reason I tell you that story is because I believe a similar thing's been going on with 5G, AI, blockchain, all this we're being we're being told as we sit here we're being told that oh the U.S. is behind well, China's way ahead of us this is the whole story we're being told I don't believe that for a minute because there's too much on the line I mean this is the the, the things that are on the line such as world reserve currency status there's too much on the line and so I believe and I'm going to show you in this video coming up it's not just me talking you're going to see the way things really work. Okay, but first I'm going to go through some of the daily absurdities of what's going on in finance. The first is second quarter GDP plunged by the worst ever 31.7% as economy went into lockdown. You'll also see, because these uh, ads deliver up, you'll also see up here that I just bought my son a 500, yes, $500 bat called a Meta. It's supposed to be the greatest bat ever made in the history of the world for a 14-year-old, and I'm sure it's not, but it's supposed to be. Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, but this is downright scary. Worst ever, 31.7% plunge in GDP as the economy went into lockdown. Okay, now let's get on to some absurdity. Today was the speech from Jerome Powell, the Federal Reserve Chairman. Gold Telegraph tweeted this out. 
Federal Reserve tweak strategy will allow inflation to run above 2% target. Surprise, surprise. Welcome to the era of gold. Well, I would call it the era of crypto and gold will benefit too. Because now for those of you that don't know, anytime you, what they're basically saying here is the whole history of the United States, the whole concept has been you want to fight inflation and you do that by raising interest rates. Well, these genius central bankers around the world have now put our world in a place where they can't raise interest rates because they're in too much debt. Okay, and so now they've put themselves firmly in a corner and now they're going to try to sell you on the idea that inflation is a good thing. We need more of it. And it's a lie. So here's Jerome Powell speaking today. Listen to this. This is from Providing Clarity. Meaning that inflation expectations would tend to move below our inflation goal and pull realized inflation down. To prevent this outcome and the adverse dynamics that could ensue, our new statement indicates that we will seek to achieve inflation that averages 2% over time. Therefore, following periods when inflation has running below 2%, appropriate monetary policy will likely aim to achieve inflation moderately above 2% for some time. In seeking to achieve inflation that averages percent over time, we are not tying ourselves to a particular mathematical formula that defines the average. Thus, our approach, approach could be viewed as a flexible form of average inflation targeting. Um, and uh, we'll this. aspire to have inflation um, run above 2% uh, uh, after periods in which it runs for extended, an extended period below 2% so that we can average 2%. So I think that that concept should be well understood. Uh, now, after I watched this, I was immediately reminded of the scene in the classic movie Vacation, where Chevy Chase has just been busted in the pool with Christy Brinkley, and now he's got to convince his wife and his son that he wasn't doing, he wasn't up to no good like he obviously was. And he's standing on the balcony with his son, and he's explaining to his son all this bull. He's trying to sell him on this crazy story. Um, about how he was up to nothing, he wasn't up to anything. And then at the end of it, his son looks at him. He says, "Do you think mom will buy it?" <laughs> and that's what I see. Um, do you think the public will buy it, Jerome Powell? Not this guy. Um, and then um, what better time to show you from Gold Telegraph this little scene? This is Venezuelan currency is so worthless. Children are now playing with the worthless notes in the street. Just watch this for a minute. This kid's having a great time playing in these in the Venezuelan currency, almost like it's a pile of leaves. I guess that's one use for currency that is devalued and printed into oblivion. But he looks like he's having a good time. Watch the jump. Here he goes. Yeah, looks like he's having a good time. Well, you're not going to be having a good time unless you're in gold, silver, Bitcoin XRP, okay? So if you want to have a good time, you might want to get in that real quick. Digital currency groups yesterday said, Barry Silver yesterday had said they had some news. The news you've been waiting for. The uh, digital currency group enters into Bitcoin mining with newest subsidiary foundry. Um, it says, uh, this is the article by a uh, global enterprise that, that says Foundry quietly formed in 2019. Foundry offers institutional expertise, capital and market intelligence to digital asset miners and manufacturers, providing them with the resources to build, maintain and, and secure de de decentralized networks. And then Barry Silbert weighed in on it, unveiling our fourth subsidiary, the Foundry or Foundry, a Bitcoin mining and crypto staking business. We have committed to invest an additional 100 million through 2021 to help build out the North American mining industry. Oh, and we believe we may already be the largest BTC miner in North America. Have fun with that. Um, and then Stephen from the Bull Diep, I wanted to show you this. This is interesting for those of you that haven't seen it. In 2018, I can't remember. I don't think I showed, maybe I showed this yesterday in a video. Oh, well, you can see it again. Uh, or maybe I just retweeted it. 2018, Brad Garlinghouse met with Caroline Moore, Special Assistant President Trump, at the White House twice, September and October 2019. There's Brad Garlinghouse. Um, there he is again. And 
says Carol Nemore will serve as special assistant to the president, director of office, and chief of staff. Let me see if anybody else had put anything. Okay. All right. Now, um, why was he there, I wonder? Hmm. XRP Crypto Wolf SBI FX trade is set to start handling XRP this month. This was included in SBI's plan to expand the company's business and operations with Ripple. All right. Chinu Patel sent me this. World gold reserves in tons. United States. I didn't realize you, the United States had that much. Um, but th these are the countries in order. United States, Germany, IMF, Italy, France, Russia, China, Switzerland, Japan, and India. Do you think we're heading back to a gold standard? I do. XRP Crypto Wolf Ripple University Blockchain Research Initiative expands to new global markets and supports 37 new university partners to further accelerate academic research, tech development, and innovation in digital payments, fintech, blockchain, and cryptocurrency. There are those nodes, again, that look like they're 3D. Now, I want to do, uh, and then finally, this one, uh, Coindesk, the Libra Association has hired a veteran of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security as its general counsel just three months after announcing his predecessor. So Libra, which is Facebook's um, digital currency initiative, is still at it, folks. They haven't gone away. Now, Sir Gordon Gecko had um, reminded me of this picture. I forgot all about this picture, but I've been talking about how I believe there's going to be nodes in space and space chain and all that over the last week or two. So I wanted to show you, for those of you that weren't around, this is David Schwartz. Picture of David Schwartz, um, and I believe, what was it? It was like some one of Ripple, I think Ripple's seventh anniversary maybe. But he had a shirt on. United States Space Force. And I remember seeing this picture, and when I saw it, um, I thought that it was just, you know, just like when I, when I interviewed Greg Kidd and he said intergalactic currency, I just thought he was a Star Trek nerd. And then when I saw this, when I, when I saw David Schwartz with this shirt on, I thought that, okay, well, that Space Force, United States Space Force, that's just, that's just one of his, like, nerdy shirts or whatever. Well, the United States Space Force is actually a thing, folks. And Maybe this is just a nerdy thing, but I, but um, I, I I tend to think otherwise. Okay, now I want to open your eyes on what your future is, and not just not not your future way out into the future, but your future as in the things that are imminent and what's what's here and what's coming sooner rather than later. But first, I need to introduce you to a guy named Jeffrey Brown, founder, chief technology analyst at Brownstone Research. Founder, investment analyst, portfolio manager, technologist, and early stage angel investor, strong hands on executive, um, on strong hands on executive with experience in genetic editing, artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain technology, semiconductors, high performance computing, quantum computing, IT networking uh, technology, robotics, cybersecurity, fintech, and media technology. This guy runs. This Brownstone Research, editor of the, the Near Future Report, exponential tech investor and early stage trader, um, says um, he was um, he spent 25 years as a high technology executive. He worked at the executive level for some of the best technology companies in the world like Qualcomm, NXP Semiconductors and Juniper Networks. OK, this guy's a futurist and he, he kind of talks about what's coming. And he's like an advisor. He goes to Washington, D.C. and advises um, politician, politicians on what's coming, what they need to be doing and all this stuff. The reason I found out about him is I happened to be on Glenn Beck's um, uh, YouTube channel. And I was look, just out of curiosity, I wanted to go see what videos had been viewed more than any video um, on Glenn Beck's channel. This one had the second place. Look at the title of it, 5G and AI Everywhere, 2030 Will Be a New World, Jeff Brown, Episode 60, Glenn Beck Podcast. And then he uh, down here, it um, talks about how he goes into all this different stuff. Um, and I think, anyway, so, so I wanted to play for you. There's several parts here that you're going to find fascinating because I did, and I think you will too. The first part is on quantum computing. Listen to this. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is quantum supremacy. Right. First of all, explain what that is. Sure. So uh, um, quantum supremacy has been obviously predicted for 
decades and decades, a half of a century, and it's the moment at which a quantum computer can outperform the most powerful classical computer on Earth. Mm -hmm. And right now that computer is called Summit. It was actually uh, um, uh, partially built by IBM and it's one of the at one of the uh, Department of Energy's national laboratories, and it's capable of something called 200 petaflops per second, which is okay. uh, you know, just imagine football field sized data centers full of racks and racks of very powerful uh, computers and servers, and the job is simply just to compute uh, the most complex problems known to man. That's what that was designed for. And one football field size, football field size. Okay. So you, you, you connect all of these systems together in their one large, massive supercomputer. Right. And the U S has the most powerful supercomputer on earth. That's the summit. Um, and, uh, for perspective, the, the quantum computer that was developed by Google, uh, is the size of a refrigerator. Wow. And there's a couple racks of equipment that kind of, help orchestrate everything, but it's, it's not a big computing system. It's the size of a refrigerator. And that single computer was able to outperform Summit, the most powerful supercomputer on Earth. And the way they tested it is they developed a very complex problem to solve. And uh, the quantum computer at Google solved it in 200 seconds. 200 seconds. And Google calculated that it would take the Summit computer about 10,000 years to solve the same problem. Wow. How do they know they got it right? <laughs> I mean, so um, uh, the, the, the measure is to be able um, uh, to crunch that massive amount right. of data and come to a conclusion. So how does that change... How does that change things? Mm. Um, it, um, it honestly, it changes everything. Uh, the truth is, is that we'll look back on this five years from now, ten years from now, and and, and th remember, this was recorded on November twenty third of two thousand nineteen. This will be one for the history books. This is like a moon landing. This this is right? absolutely a moon landing. And it was something that recently there were lots of people that said. Oh, that's a long way down the road. Correct. As recently as last year, experts were saying right. we are a long way away from quantum supremacy. Ten years right. plus. Absolutely. And we just hit it, and it kind of went by, and nobody noticed. And this is the thing that I really wanted to have you on, because we had a conversation about a year ago. Right. Um, okay. Now, he picks up the quantum computing. Co I'm going to jump ahead and then go back because he talks about quantum computing again at the 4310 mark. Let's go to right in here. Ah, here we go. It is, is staggering. It is staggering. And we're not even, we're, we're not even scratching the surface. I mean, yeah. let's go back to quantum computing. Okay. How much, how far are we away from uh, quantum computing really making all encryption, you know, uh, R rendering it meaningless? It's meaningless. Right? Yeah, I yeah. Mean, um, so um, for uh, many years, a couple decades, uh, the, the, uh, when people refer to kind of military grade encryption, uh, it's called 256 bit. Um, Encryption. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like the the standard for um, security and, and yeah. encryption technology. All sorts of nuances around that. Uh, not very relevant. The quantum computer that Google built um, was a fifty three was is a fifty three qubit. qubit quantum computer. It actually was fifty four, but one of the bits didn't work. Mm. So we had fifty three functioning qubits um, at a very high level. The moment that we build, uh, oh, by the way, a 53-bit quantum computer can crack 256-bit encryption, just to How be fast. very clear. How fast? It'll take some time. Uh, let's say a matter of uh, uh, um, hours, <laughs> maybe more than a day, but you know, it's not a long period of time. Let's just say loosely less than 
less than 48 hours. Um, the this is our starter set. Yeah, this, this is our this is our these are the training candy, wheels. Uh, our, <laughs> <laughs> our, uh, imagine the, the moment. And by the way, we are not far away. This is what, to your point, I'm inc- I'm incredibly amazed people haven't written about this. It's not a big leap to get once you have a functional quantum computer. Correct. It's not a big leap to get from 53 to 256. Right. The moment you have 256, you can crack that encryption software in milliseconds. It's over. Uh, and so what I can tell you right now, uh, the industry, especially the cybersecurity industry, is scrambling right now because we have a massive problem on our hands and we haven't figured out how to solve it yet. Uh, and we have to do something. We literally need to have um, different methods of encryption and security to protect our most vital information all of our banking, both our security on military, absolutely a, a missile launch, everything. Corporations, governments, everything. intelligence organizations, you and I, the whole bit. All right. Okay, so that's the quantum computing part. Now, I wanted to let you hear what's in store for you with your mobile phone and your and 5G. This is fascinating too. Uh, listen to this part. Ah. Eh. It's at the 34, we're around in here. You with that digital assistant that's going to be able to book your trip to Hawaii and tell you how to pay for it. Sure. Just chat with it and it's done. It's so easy. Anyone on earth, this is the great thing about both um, uh, 5G wireless technology and the advancements in um, uh, uh, artificial intelligence hardware and software. And when I say hardware, I'm referring to specifically semiconductors. Um, by the next generation of phones that come out, you will have uh, an artificial intelligence enabled supercomputer in your hand capable of running any digital assistant. The it's next generation? Out. Yes, it's coming out in 2020, within the next 12 months. And the current forecast for 2020 are at least 300 million 5G enabled handsets. So the, the, the explosion is literally happening in the next 12 months. We're off to the races. What is that going to mean? Um, you mean upside and downside? Well, uh, you, you gave a great example. Okay, so that's what's going on right now. <clears throat> now, this, this next clip is about at the 106, let's see, 106.20. Now, um, this next clip illustrates the point kind of that I was making at the beginning of this video. And that point is, is that there's a, there's a tendency, um, in, I guess in life and, and in this space that if, oh, if it's not written in an article, then it's not true. That's just some crazy speculation, but that's not the way the world works. Here's the way the world works. If something important is happening, it's happening in secret. And here's a great example. They mention it in this video, the man, Manhattan project project where they, created the nuclear bomb was done in secret for a reason. It was done in secret because it was that important. The stakes were that high. Well, it's no different with 5G, quantum computing, AI, and blockchain. There's many things that have been going on in, in, in secret. And he tells you one example of what's really going on here. He's talking at this point about how Chuck Schumer announced that they were going to, um, that, that Congress was going to spend like a hundred million dollars on AI. And then he goes into what's been going on behind the scenes in private industry before that announcement, as if a hundred million is a lot of money in this, in the scheme of things, it's nothing. But his point is, is that just because you see someone walking up to the microphone in Congress saying something does not mean that the United States is behind on anything. These guys are all over it and have been. Listen to this. Um, so back to Schumer <laughs> in the hundred billion dollar request, um, take a guess at how much, this is just in the United States alone, between 2016 and 2018, how much the private sector invested in artificial intelligence companies? No idea. Wild guess. But, uh, it's, got a, it's, it's got a dwarf what the government said. So just keep, it, keep in mind, this is just artificial intelligence. The venture capital community, private investors, yep. funded 
U.S. artificial intelligence companies to the tune of $105 billion Billion. between 2016 and 2018. And that doesn't include what's been happening in 2019. 2019, I I believe, will see even larger numbers. So more than $50 billion will will have been invested in artificial intelligence companies in the United States in 2019. Which means over the course of four years, we will have spent something on the order of Invested, I should say, $160, $170 billion. That's how much the private sector has been been investing in this technology. It's extraordinary. We're not behind. Mm. We're ahead. All of the intelligence, the best artificial intelligence researchers, where do they want to work? Here in the United States. Why? Because the money's here to invest in these moonshots, to make these incredible breakthroughs. Invest in AI shots, huh? Is it a given to you that it would be Google? Okay, and now the last clip I want to play is about a six-minute clip, but it's about China and crypto, and you need to listen up because I've told you all along, we're not behind anything. That's a, that is a farce. They can say it all they want, but we're not. ...themselves, but... I'm talking about uh, you know companies like uh, Alibaba, the, the you know mm-hmm. the China equivalent of Amazon or mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, Tencent and WeChat. Uh, you know their messaging. By the way, one thing he does he says that we that we are um, on the front end behind on is how the scanning and the and, the, and this is what he's talking about here is he he says that they've already got their barcodes and all that going on, but the United States has been planning for this for a long time in application platforms they've turned them into these incredibly powerful commerce platforms all on the phone um whether you want to book a doctor's appointment or make a bank transfer or um chat with a friend or send it it, it does send a message it doesn't matter it all happens through this uh, particular application and across these platforms they have access to roughly, let's just say, 85 to 90 percent of their entire population. And let's remember, you know, these companies are very tightly linked to the centralized communist Correct. Chinese government. We don't have that in the United States. Uh, they have this pervasive network. Um, and um, what's really interesting and very topical right now is they're in the process of launching their own digital currency. We can think of this as a digital version of the renminbi. Mm. So the ability to eventually completely eliminate their own fiat currency and go completely digital, a digital reserve currency. And it won't be long before they start to transition their international trade relationships to that platform as well. China has been very progressive with something called blockchain technology. And the U.S. has been very restrictive with a very heavy hand from a regulatory environment. I've been spending a lot of time in in D.C. um, being part of that discussion and uh, and hopefully trying to influence policymakers in a positive way so that we can actually support innovation in this country with that technology. Another great example of something being out of the bag. Blockchain, how is that affected by quantum computing? Is it Listen still as, as locked in or not? Well, the, 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 the biggest challenge with quantum computing is, is security. Right. Right. Like, so can it, is, well, so, so um, blockchain mining. is much more than 256. Uh, well, um, if you have uh, blockchains that um, use mining uh, to mine and, and solve these cryptographic problems, uh-huh. you're pretty much stuffed within, <laughs> within two years. Um, but the great thing said? is, um, you're pretty much stuffed within two years. If if you're as far as mining, that makes me wonder ooh, who created this Bitcoin thing because it's not the one. It never was. XRP is the one. The the mining is the disaster, and it's just a matter of time. Is that it's software, and so it emerges, and a new version is released. Uh, and and they can develop uh, new technology to make it resistant to a quantum computing attack. So would would um, 
in the United States mm. if we decided to go to digital currency. Part of the idea of, of cryptocurrency is mm, I, I have freedom, and it's, it's not uh, used politically, per mm. se. It's, it's not controlled. It's a, a limited uh, right. amount. I mean, it is the gold standard digitally. Uh, and and it, it it frees me up from the, gold standard the governments digitally. of the world. I can take it wherever I want. I, I can spend it however yeah. I want. Yeah. If the United States does digital currency, um, it doesn't change anything from fiat currencies because they can change the value. Um, and is there an appetite? I don't see people in Washington as real cutting edge I mean, mm. you talk to them about bitcoin and they probably still don't know much about bitcoin yeah. is that a possibility that we are moving in that direction i i believe it's inevitable that we do um so so the difference is when you when you have um and let's take for example uh the bitcoin blockchain its own monetary policy is a math equation mm -hmm. it's predetermined and cannot be mm -hmm. changed mm -hmm. that's the beauty of it so um, does it remain well, um, uh, most um, uh, most blockchains, uh, m the monetary policy of most blockchains are uh, basically immutable. They're written into policy. the code and cannot be modified. Uh, in in the case of uh, the digital renminbi, B, and let's call it Fedcoin or you know the EUS mm -hmm. dollar or something, mm -hmm. um, the central government would still control that monetary policy. Um, and the reason I think it's inevitable is that governments are highly incentivized to do it because th the thing with Bitcoin is they're not anonymous transactions. Mm -hmm. It's an immutable database, an immutable exactly. ledger. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see exactly which transaction you made mm -hmm. <laughs> on any given day uh, and from the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. So no transaction is secret whatsoever. But is it, I mean, you know, is, isn't that attractive for a government? Religious people would call that the mark of the beast, right? Where you cannot <laughs> buy, sell without being known, no secrets, mm -hmm. all open and controlled by a central power mm -hmm. that can find you, track you, do all of it. I mean, it, we're all the things that I remember as a kid being religious, uh, being uh, raised in a religious school. That was crazy. That'll never happen. Mm. It, it's all here. This, this, that's what this is. That's it is happening. Is. It, is it is happening. And if you think about just something as simple as um, taxation. Yeah. Right? Uh, if we had every transaction on uh, Federal Reserve controlled blockchain technology, no transaction would go untaxed. Mm. What would that do to tax revenues? Might get if rid everybody of the IRS. just paid what they were supposed to pay, mm -hmm. no money to be, be you need the exchanged IRS in uh, behind closed doors. Way. Yeah, it would just be automatic. Um, so that incentive—that's a powerful incentive for us to uh, to migrate towards a digital currency model. Yep, it's all been planned, folks. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family that this is one interesting little video here. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was an eye opener for me. And you can go, uh, if you want to watch the whole thing, it's at Glenn Beck's channel. Um, and uh, it's called 5G and AI Everywhere. Okay, thank you for listening. Every day. Billions of people around the world are mocked, ridiculed, laughed at, and embarrassed by their friends, family, and even strangers. These people go through their days knowing there are secrets being kept from them. They hear the faint whispers behind closed doors. The information and knowledge is held very close and only shared with others who were fortunate enough to find out. Feeling lost, rejected, and ostracized, these people give up never finding out what digital assets the digital asset investor holds. But there is hope. Join the free digital asset investor email newsletter and find out what digital assets he owns each month, including investments he's considering. Click the link in the description of this video or go to digitalassetinvestornewsletter.com.
put an end to your days of gloom and depression. Join the greatest free digital asset email newsletter ever created.